This is Nick with Logos by Nick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this overlapping circle infographic using Inkscape. So we'll go ahead and get started here in Inkscape. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear darken with these updated icons that I've designed, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. So the first thing we want to do is set up our documents so that we're all working with a similar view. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to File, Document Properties. Let me try that again. Document properties, there we go. We'll set the display units to PX for pixels, and I'm gonna uncheck the show page border so that's not visible on the canvas, and we'll close out of that. And then we'll go to view, we're gonna want custom selected, and then we'll zoom in at one-to-one. -one. We'll want, uh, from the snapping menu up here, we're gonna wanna select snap to cusp nodes and then snap to smooth nodes. We want those two turned on. And then I'm gonna open up the align and distribute menu with this button right here. We'll choose last, uh, last selected from that drop down, and then we'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that button there. So the first thing we're going to do is create our circle. So we'll grab the circles and ellipses tool, and I'm going to hold control and shift on the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly round circle like that. And I'm going to take the opacity of this and drop this down about in half. It doesn't have to be exactly in half, just somewhere roughly in half. And we'll convert that to a path by going to path, object to path. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab the select tool right here. And with this circle selected, I'm gonna right click that and go to duplicate. And I'll hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this out to about maybe here, about that far so that they're overlapping like that. And what I wanna do next is duplicate this circle by right clicking that and going to duplicate. And I'm gonna turn this one red. And I'm gonna take the top of this circle and just snap it underneath the bottom of this circle right here. And then I'm going to take this black circle and create another one by hitting Control D. And I'll put this right in the center, right about here. And then I'll hold Shift and click on the red circle and the black circle above it so we have those three selected. And from the Distribute panel over here, we're going to want to click this button that says Make Vertical Gaps Between Objects Equal. Now we can click off of that to deselect everything. Take this red circle and just press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. And then I want to click and drag over all three of these circles right here. And where it says distribute, I want to click this button up here that says make horizontal gaps between objects equal. Go ahead and click on that. And now everything should be equally spaced out, both vertically and horizontally. And once we've done that, we can go to path, combine. And what I'll do next is I'm going to right click on this object and go to copy. And then I'm going to grab the squares and rectangles tool and I'm going to click and drag to create a rectangle. And I want to convert that to a path as well by going to path, object to path. And then we'll go to edit paste size and paste size. We'll go back to the select tool. I wanna to click this button over here that says lower selection to the bottom. Click and drag over both of those objects so that they're both selected. And I'm gonna center them up on the vertical and horizontal axis. And with them both still selected, I'll go to path, division. And now we can click off of that to deselect everything. And I'm gonna take this corner object and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And I'll do the same thing with these other corner objects. Just get rid of them, and then this little piece up here in the top in the middle, get rid of that as well. Just pressing, just clicking and dragging, and then pressing delete on the keyboard. And then I want to take this little piece right here and make that green. And I'll do the same thing to these other two pieces right here that are, that are intersecting. Make those green. We can take this one. We can take this one and just move it out of the way, or you can delete it if you'd like. I'm just going to move it out of the way for now. Then what I want to do is click on this red object up here to the top left and then hold shift and click on the green object to the right and unify them both together by going to path, union. And then I'll make that blue. Then I'll click on this red object over here. I'll hold shift, click on this green object and go to path, union. And I'll just leave that green. Then I'll click on this object right here, the red one, then hold shift and click on this other green object and unify them as well by going to path, union. And then I want to make that one, I'll make that one red. And what I want to do now is create little shadows coming off the edges here, as you, as you saw in the thumbnail. Off of each edge here, I have a little bit of a shadow coming off. So to do that, first I want to, what I want to do is take this blue object and duplicate that by hitting Control D on the keyboard. And I want to make this black. And then I want to click on this a second time so that we get the rotation handles. And once we get the rotation handles, we're going to see this little crosshair up here in the center of the object. This crosshair represents the axis on which the item rotates. So if I put this up here, it'll rotate around that axis. That's the rotation center. So let me put that back to where it was. I want to come up here where it says snap an item's rotation center. I want to turn that button on 
and then take this little crosshair and place it over this corner right here. And once we've done that, we could just temporarily turn off all of the snapping and then just grab this corner, this corner rotation arrow and just rotate this around about that much. Then we could take the green object, hit Control D to duplicate it, hold Shift, click on the black object we just rotated, and go to Path <clears throat> Intersection. And there we have our little shadow piece. We could even bring the opacity of that down a little bit. And I'm going to go and do that to the other two shapes as well. So I'm going to click on this green object, hit Control D to duplicate it, make it black, turn snapping back on, click on it again to get the rotation handles and so that, that little uh, crosshair appears and then just take that and snap that onto the corner here. And we can temporarily turn off the uh, snapping and just rotate this around about that far. Click the red object, duplicate that with Control D, hold Shift, click on the black object and go to Path Intersection. And I'm gonna do that one more time. Take the red object, let's turn the snapping back on Hit Control D to duplicate that. Click on it again so we can grab our rotation center and snap it onto the corner. Temporarily turn off snapping and we can make this black and then just rotate this around about that much. And then finally we can take the blue object, hit Control D to duplicate that, hold Shift, click on the black object and go to Path Intersection. So we now have the main uh, design set, so we just have to color it in now. So I'm going to click and drag over all of this and bring the opacity all the way up and click off of it to deselect. I'm actually going to take this, uh, click on it again to get the rotation handles, and I'm going to hold control and rotate this around so it's going the other way, like that. Now we can click off of that to deselect everything. Uh, I'm going to take this green object and make this a dark blue. This is going to be like a social media sort of uh, infographic. So for this, this segment, I'm going to use Facebook. This one's going to be YouTube, and this one will be Twitter. So I'll take this object here, and I'll make this a dark shade of blue, maybe something like that. Maybe something like that. And I'll take this one right here. We'll want this one to be red. So I'll, just, I'll actually just leave that as it is. And I'll take this one and make this a lighter blue. Maybe something like that right there. And what we could do now is click on this black object, hold shift and click on the other black object so we have them all selected and just bring the opacity down so that it appears as if it's a, a, a shadow being casted by each object lapping over it. And once we've done that, all we have to do now is fill in each segment with information. So I'm going to put on here, I'm going to put O1 and then over here I'll put O2 and then over here O3. So I'll grab the text tool and click on the canvas till we get a blinking cursor. I'll hit 01 on this line, 02 on the next, and 03 on the following line. I'll go to the text uh, editor. Let me grab that from my other screen. Here we go. Um, make that a little smaller. And the font I'm going to use here is Leto. You can use whichever font you'd like. Uh, I'll use uh, Leto Heavy like that. Go ahead and apply it. Close out of it. And I'm going to go to the select tool and just bring these numbers over here. I'll make them white. Let me change the color of this to white. Then I'll go to Path, Object to Path, and then ungroup them like that. And I'm just going to zoom in over this little area right here by holding Control and rolling up the mouse wheel. I'm going to deselect everything by clicking off of the, uh, the graphic. And I'm going to take these two, I'll hold Shift and click on both of them and just group them together. And I'll do the same thing with these other two, just group those together. Holding Shift, clicking on both, and grouping them together. And I'll leave this number one right here. I'll take this number two and put this over here. And I'll take this number three and put this over here. And now I'm just going to generate some text to fill this in with. It doesn't have to be meaningful text. It could just be basic stock, lorem ipsum, or whatever it's called text. Uh, to do that, I'm going to go to Extensions, Text, and click on Lorem Ipsum, if that's the way it's pronounced. And for these presets up here, number of paragraphs, one. Sentences per paragraph, two. Paragraph length fluctuation, which is the number of sentences, two. Go ahead and click Apply. And that's just going to generate some basic text. And there it is right there. Uh, I'm going to take that text and change the font of it. I'm going to change that to Lato as well. You, like, again, you could use whichever font you'd like. I'll use Lato Bold for that one. And let me put this over here. I'm going to make that smaller by holding Control and Shift and just clicking and dragging to scale that down. Make that a little smaller, actually. And that's pretty good. Once we've done that, I'll make that white. I'll go back to the text editor. 
and I'll just put uh, I'll put line breaks after each word to make it uh, fit the width of the object here. Maybe I should put that one on the next line as well. Uh, put this one over here. Uh, as good as it is. I'll take that one, put it down there. And I'll just go back to the select tool. And maybe I'll make that a little smaller by holding control and just scaling it down. I want this one to be directly over the text. And I'm just going to duplicate this text by hitting control D. This is just placeholder text. If you're going to actually use this infographic for something useful, go ahead and put your own text in there. For me, I'm just, this is just a tutorial, so I'm just putting placeholder text. And I'll just duplicate that as well. Again, to duplicate, I'm hitting control D. And now I'm going to put little icons in each one. And if you're using this infographic yourself, I would suggest finding little icons to put in each segment as well because it just makes the design come together nicely. But the icons I'm going to use for this tutorial are social media logos. And uh, I will have SG, SVG files, which are Inkscape files, for these logos linked in the description of the video in case you'd like to download them and use them yourself. So uh, I'm going to import them into Inkscape by going to File, Import. And I'll go down here to wherever I have it saved, social media icons, open. There they are. So this is available. I'll have this linked in the description. This is a collection of social media logos in, in, in vector format that I put together on my website. Free to download, just go ahead and check it out. I'm gonna ungroup those and I'll take the Facebook logo and put this down here. I'll make that white. I'm gonna scale that down a little bit and hold control while scaling it to lock the proportions. Just like that, I'll put the YouTube logo up here. Maybe I'll move that text over a little bit. I'm gonna make the YouTube logo a little smaller. And then finally, the little Twitter bird. I'm gonna put that up here. Make that white. Move that over. Make that a little smaller even. And we can press one on the keyboard to zoom out to 100%. And as you can see, we've finished. We've created our simple little overlapping circle uh, infographic using Inkscape. So that's how you can do that. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.